All right, so it's your boy Vader. This is On The Rise. And today we're here with widely known person in the 518 area, Angela Rollins. How are you doing today? Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. And yourself? I'm doing, I'm happy as fuck right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy as fuck right now. I got it. <laughs> I'm happy as fuck right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I don't do interviews. But for you, I'm going to give you your flowers. Because when I was a promoter and I was coming up in the game, and doing all these shows, you, you, I ain't going to lie, you never told me no. You always pulled up to events. You asked me for passes. I always gave you passes. Like We always had that relationship. So when you hit me up for this interview, there was no way I could tell you no. I'm going to always support anything you do because as I was coming up, you always supported me. So flowers are due where they're due. Word, word, word. And um, just like we, we were talking about, you know, and I was explaining before, I was like, yo, I don't understand this lady. Like, she... She fucked with me, but I don't know if she fucks with me. Like, and like I would, I would always um, talk to like other people. I'd be like, yo, I don't think she fucks with me, bro. Like, her vibe off, but she she be helping me out, but her vibe off. And they'd be like, other people, a lot of people, they'd be like, yeah, bro, like I don't fuck with her, bro. She don't listen to my music, bro. Like, why she don't never answer me, bro? Like any 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 person, any the majority of people that make music out here that I've talked with, because as you know, I've gone to multiple local shows Facts. coming up, so. Yeah, and I'd be like, yeah, uh, I went to Angela's show. Did you go? Yeah, bro, it was all right, bro. But she don't be fucking with me, bro. I don't fuck with her. Could you could you just explain a little bit, you know what I mean, about how you are as a person <laughs> so people <laughs> might know? Um, I am the coolest person on the earth. That's how I feel. You mm. know what I'm saying? However, like, I understand the fact that Everybody, it's like it's like when you're when you're coming up, bro. Any any outlet, any person that's a little bit further than you, you try to get to that person. But you got to understand that person is trying to get to the next person too. Mm -hmm. So as you're focused on that person, that person's focused on the next person and trying to get. You know, a lot of people hit me up for this area, and I, you know, it's it's I love the 518. Like this is where I'm from. This is who built me. This is where I came up. I've had trials, tribulations, successes in the 518, and I love, I love the 518. Like, anywhere we go, I like, yeah, from the 518, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Whether it be Miami, Atlanta, where, no matter where I am, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, oh, you're not from the city? I'm like, hell no, I'm not from the city. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it, but it's like, it's like, I, it's not that I don't fuck with people, or it's not, there's only so many hours of the day, and I have to get done certain things that are expected of me for my career to rise let alone turn around and try to help somebody else. Maybe when I get a little bit further in my career, I can turn around and grab a bunch of people. I don't know. I can't determine that because I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I am getting there. Don't get it twisted. We're not going to do that. <laughs> but, like, I am not officially there yet. I try to, like, people hit me on Facebook. People hit me on Instagram. I try to give as best advice as I can, I, you know, on the little bit of I know of whoever the person is talking to or whatever time I have. I try to do that. I do. I, I don't try to be a bitch. You know what I mean? Like, everybody labeled, labeled me as. But I, it's, it's hard, bro. You only have so many hours of the day. My phone rings nonstop. You've been in a... When we were getting ready for this, how many times, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you heard me on the phone, this person called, that person called, the Texas is going crazy. Like, yeah. it, it, you only have so many hours of the day, so you can only entertain X amount of time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So people really do get mad at you, and they really, like, put you in a box, and that's really not who I am. Like, I am the coolest person ever, and I love people, like, in general. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I love the, the fact that the 518 has a movement. I love the fact that everybody's trying to grind together. I love that. But it's like I have to get where I have to go and take care of me and mine and my artists and my kids, let alone help other people. Mm. You know what I mean? Word. Yeah, no, no, you definitely, um, I don't know how, I don't know why. Like I said, at first I didn't understand it. I'm like, man, shit kind of get me hot. But like, <laughs> now, but, now, but now that I'm older, I will say this. Um, and for people that are like um, listening, because you could probably learn a lot from this interview, um, the reason why I wanted to get it done. But yeah, being around you and just learning how other like managers, A&Rs uh, work and talk to each other, I didn't understand it. But the more I did this and now I'm here, I don't take nothing personal now. Now I don't, you know what I mean? Do you think maybe artists are too like, they think things personal? Well, music is a passionate, it's an artistic thing. So it's like, there's passion put in it, there's stories put in it, there's feelings put in it. So music affects people differently. Yeah. So they look at it like, 
yo, that's my means, or that's my homegirl, or that's this, or yo, I fuck with this, or you know what I mean, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's a business, bro. It's a business. There's a lot of money to be made. There's a lot of money to be lost. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you still have to treat it like a, like any other business. You know what I'm saying? So, like, time is valuable for anybody. And I have people hit me up like, yo, I'll pay you to listen to my music. But I'm not that type of person either. I'm not going to take your money. I've never took any money from anybody out here to listen to music, anything like that. You know what I mean? I tried to throw a couple years ago. We did a uh, pull up and play over... Uh, at one of the studios in Albany, and I tried to, like, I had to pay for the a to come in, their hotel rooms, their flights, whatever. Yeah, I remember and, I was there. Right, and I tried to pay, like, you know what I mean? I tried to do something like that, because I try to crack the door for anybody I can. I can't necessarily walk you through the door, but I'm trying to open the door so then you guys can build your own, own relationships. What you do once I open the door or do what I can to open the door, that's on y'all. I can't mm. hold everybody's hand. I'm one person. I got artists, too. You know what I'm saying? I got businesses, I got artists, I got kids, I got a household, I got stuff I got to take care of as well. Yeah. So I do what I can in mm -hmm. a little bit of time I got. <laughs> yo, yo, keep it a band. Do, do you like tell people their music ass? Or will you like keep it I have stack? told people their music is ass. I have, I have. It, it's probably not the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I saw Goldie's interview and old Goldie was like, no, nah, I don't really, but I have. I'd be like, bro, that's, I, I don't be like, it's ass. I'd be like, bro, that's not it. Like, let's try something else or play something else or skip that record. Like, I don't come out and be like, yo, that shit is terrible. <laughs> nah, like, <laughs> nah, never. <laughs> nah, I ain't going to count. I'm going to have time. Bro, I'd be like, yo, why don't you play another record? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, or like, yo. That, that was cool. That was cool. <laughs> no, I don't even like that's cool. Like, I, I can't even do that. Like, I'd be like, yo, just, okay, what's the next record you got? You know what I mean? Like, let's, you know, but... You know, it, it's everything's opinion-based, too. What I like, the next A&R, the next manager, the next whatever you want to say might like. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't do Little Pump. I can't, there's certain things I can't do. But look how many people like him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything is not for everybody. So, like, if you're an artist and I ever was like, that's not it, just, you can't go just by me, bro. Like, there's other people that might be like, that's it. Mm. And might be able to push you into, you just got to find your door. You got to knock on enough doors until one of them open. Mm -hmm. the, the, the hard part is not, not giving up. Like you can't give up. Everybody give up. Oh, man, uh, 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 woe is me. I'm the victim. Nobody fuck with me. This, that, and the third. I don't want to hear that shit because I don't, people tell me no all the time. I'm like, all right, go this way. I don't take no for an answer. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's why my career is where it is because I never took no. When I first became a promoter, they're like, this white girl's gonna do hip hop. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. All right, watch this. Did what I did. You know what I mean? I came up in the ranks. It was nasty, it was ugly. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't pretty, it wasn't smooth, but I did it. But it was constant people shutting the door, shutting the door, shutting the door, and I just kept knocking on doors until one opened. Yeah. It's persistence, it's consistency. Word, word, word. And just for, because I feel like, um, Artists, like, the thing is about artists, like, I personally feel like out here, I, I feel like they don't do enough, like, research, and, you know, a lot of people, I know if we had talks before, we'd be like, yeah, have so many people uh, ask me to be their manager, have so many people ask me to be their whatever, could you explain, like, your title and responsibilities, so, like, you know, examples, just so, like, they can, like, fucking understand, you know, what it is that, um, and what it takes, you know, to do what you do. I mean, there's no blueprint to this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, everybody's blueprint is different. Little Baby didn't come out how, come up how, like, Blueface came up, how Rod Wave came up. You mm -hmm. understand how Tory Lanez came up. Everybody came up different. You know what I'm saying? There, if I had the sauce and the blueprint, I'd be rich. You hear me? I wouldn't even answer my phone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, that's not the case. You got to keep... You got to keep going until you find your way. You got to keep knocking on them doors. This didn't work. Okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And never get discouraged. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, my title, I, I, I am an artist manager. I have a couple artists. Uh, I am an a and I've put deals together for people and, like, stepped out of the way once I put the deal together. Um, I am a booking agent. I am this. I am that. Because I've been in the music industry. I was a promoter at one point in time, and that's how my career really started. So I, it's like it's like a stepping stone. Once you get your foot in the door and you really get to a certain level, you can kind of maneuver. You know what I mean? We've got placements with 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 big producers. We've you know what I mean? Like we've done a lot of stuff, and it, it's not a one lane thing. I can't be like I'm only an artist manager. 
because that's not what I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And every day is something different. You know what I'm saying? Every day my phone rings. Ange, what do you think about this? Or what about this opportunity? Or you think you could plug me with this person? Or you think it... You know, so it's, it's really you're a chameleon. Depends on the day. Depends on what your job is. Because even A&R that works at labels will put deals together or plug people together or find other people managers. Or, yo, you know what? He would work really good with this. And it, they might not have nothing to do with this situation. But it's really those are the relationships that you develop. And that's how your career progresses when you do good business. Mm-hmm. You mentioned, you mentioned, uh, you said you manage um, artists and producers. I remember one, and I know we're talking about memories, but I remember one time uh, at a show, um, you had pulled one of of your producers that uh, platinum plaque. Yeah. Um, It it was with the Migos, right? Facts. Could you explain, like, um, the experience of what it took to, like, get that done? Like, or could you explain just, like, what it was like just getting that done, you know what I mean, and accomplishing it? Um, you're talking about JSDG and Manny Flex. Um, they were actually, uh, at that point, they were college students, and uh, they got a placement with the Migos. And uh, I'll tell you the story, um, give you a little bit of sauce from behind the scenes. So they submitted the record, or they submitted the track. Um, the record got cut. We didn't hear back from them, so we didn't think we got a placement. The album, it was Grammy weekend in New York. I'll never forget it, because I, um, I was with CMG. I was with Yo Gotti that weekend. And... Um, my phone is like, I'm in the event and my phone is going ballistic. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I walk out the event. It's freezing outside. It's February. So I walk outside and I'm like, what is going on? They're like, Ange, they got the record. They used the record on the album. And uh, I'm like, all right, calm down. I'm like, at an event, I'll call you right back. So I walk, you know, the event gets over. I walk outside. I call JSDG back. We, we have the conversation. He's like, I make a phone call. Well, let's go backwards. They had credited Quavo for the record originally and um you know he's freaking out twitter's going crazy like it's like a whole thing you know the blogs are reposting it like it it turned into a whole thing so um i made a couple phone calls and the next thing you know offset is tech is facetiming jsdg and apologizing and like next thing you know they want to sign them and whatever so it all worked out in the end i contacted my lawyer which happens to be navarro um he got it worked out the boys got paid what they were supposed to get paid. They got their back ends. They got their credit, and no, no harm, no foul. It all worked out. Or well, that's that. That story sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> story sounds crazy. Yeah. But but that's fire. It's super fire. And and are they from out here? They're from the city. Um, mm. but they were going to um, they were going to um, I want to say St. Rose. Yeah, it was St. Rose. They were going to St. Rose at the time. And I had actually met them just being in the studios. Actually, I met them through Magic, uh, one of the engineers. Um, mm-hmm. I was working with an ar- artist named Cash at the time. He's an R&B artist from Houston. And JSDG actually had a placement with Cash. They did a record together. So that's how I met them originally. And then it went from there. You know, those are my guys. Those are my guys. To this day, they're my guys. You know what I mean? And then he got pla- he went on to do placements with uh, Designer and Casanova and a bunch of other artists. So, you know, he does his thing. You know, coming from St. Rose. Lord, that all right? That story just went even more from city. Went to school up here, and then ends up just going. <laughs> that's that's nuts. It just shows that. We had to like, flex a little yeah. muscle. We got it done though. You know yeah, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. That's wild because motherfucker going to school just up here in Albany, just chilling. And I met him in the studio. It was thanks to Magic though. Magic put us together. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Word and um, you know, asking you going off of just talking about the area. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of talent out here and stuff Absolutely. like that. Um, we were talking, we were talking off camera. Uh, you know, you never got to it, but I'm going to ask you right now. So, like, obviously, you know about, everyone talks about the top five. Um, you have a, a close relationship with Suave, of course. I saw Suave uh, post about it. I don't know if you ever saw it. I did see it. Of course he, I saw it. Yeah, he, of course. He, yeah, and he just, not necessarily calling everyone out, but you know how Suave is, you know what I mean? And um, on top of that, just everyone is just was in a frenzy. And it's still kind of like that now, even so. Everyone's dropping more music now. Um, it's good, though. It's good. Yeah, Sometimes definitely. you got to start to kick the hornet's nest, to start a pot, whatever you want to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely into that, yes. Uh, competition is, is important, but do you have, like, a top five? Or? Of course I do. Or his name is Swab the Don. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no, no, like, no funny shit. Like, I, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I know this area has got a lot of dope artists. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm gonna go hard for mines. Period. So that's where I'm going with that conversation. But at the same time, it's like 
it's like he worked with a lot of artists. I know there's a lot of dope artists. I know there's a lot of artists up here doing stuff. I know DTB we just did the record with Stunner. I know, you know, selly has got a couple, you know, big art, you know, big uh, features. And he's always working. Like, there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of dope stuff. I'm not really tuned in enough to give you top five. And that's my honest, that's me being real honest. Because mm-hmm. I'm just all over the place. I, I'm here, I'm there, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So, like, I'm not tuned in enough to give you top five. Um... People, we're going to talk about Suave a little bit. People people think, oh, he fell off. He didn't do this. He didn't do that from times two. You know what I'm saying? And that record was huge. Mm-hmm. It's got like four million streams last time I checked. That's so, crazy. yeah, exactly. With with and, and let's be honest with each other. Like, we're going to give you a candid interview. I'm going to give it to you. So at the time that we dropped that project, Matter of Grind, we had nothing, bro. We were all broke. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I had a bad run. You know what I mean? We were all living at my house. All of us. You know what I'm saying? We were working together. We were living together. We were doing music together. And we did what we did. We had the Hot 97 interview. We had, you know, everything that was going that looked great on social media. We were really struggling getting it together. But we were doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, life is ups and downs. Sometimes you're up. Sometimes you're down. You know what I'm saying? But we were getting it done. We were getting it done. And that was the important part. We did the record with Luke Got Cash. We did the show. You know, yeah. I did the G Herbo show, which would be the last show I ever did in <laughs> Albany. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but like, you know, like we went through. We so went it went through. though. <laughs> <laughs> it went yeah, though. Yo, it was lit. Yo, you can't take that away from us. Like that shit was about to be nuts. Yeah. But anyway, like, you know, and we can sit here and laugh. Me and Suave were, were like, he got a show in Buffalo, and we left that night, and we drove all the way to Buffalo, which is, what, five hours? We did the show. Meanwhile, we got detained at the border because we took a wrong turn, so we're in, stuck in Canada for, like, three hours. Mm-hmm. They're trying to take me to jail, so I'm like, no, if you're going to jail, I'm going to jail. I'm telling them no. Like, if I go to jail, you got to take the car and go get bail money and figure this shit out. He's like, nope, Inch, if you're going to jail, I'm going to jail. <laughs> That's crazy. Guys, Swap, guys TV, T- <laughs> <laughs> Hank and TV are with us. Yo, bro, I'm telling you, like, we got stories for days. But that's what I'm saying. That's really my family. Like, there's nothing that, even if that kid never made another record in his life, like, I'm old. That's my family. That's my family. You know mm. what I'm saying? I'm always going to have his back no matter what. No matter what arguments we've been through publicly, privately, whatever we've been through, that's my family. And I'm always going to be loyal to him. You know what I'm saying? So... It, we just have that relationship. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we made the show. And we did the show. It was like maybe 25 minutes. And then we drove back from Buffalo. So we drove 10 and a half hours, plus getting detained three hours at the border, and to do a 20-minute show. But that's dedication. That's what I'm saying. Like, people don't realize we were going to the city. We were doing Cranberry's birthday party. We were doing the Dirk show. We were doing Slump Fest. We were doing that. We were traveling all over the place. And, and, like, it wears on you. You're living together. You're working together. You're in the studio together. You're, you're, you're you know what I mean, doing shows. I'm throwing shows. I'm stressed out. And he didn't really, it wasn't even fair to him low-key because I wasn't really being his manager. I was being the promoter on a lot of these shows. So he didn't even get me to be his real manager at this shit. I'm telling him he can only have three people backstage because I'm the promoter on the show. You know what I mean? He's like, Ange, I'm the, I understand that, but you got to understand, like, I, I felt bad, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it took, it wears on you, bro. You know what I'm saying? He had to take this time, he had to take a step back to get his stuff together, to go forward. So people can say he fell off or whatever, but just wait, I got something for you. Word. You can have me worried. <laughs> you can have me worried, bro. I was on that camera, I was sick. Tell him, I'm like, yo, you got to do something. I even tell him, um, they had just talked to him, like, the other day when I was telling you, we was talking, yeah. um. Yeah, so he said he got something in the store. He ain't say nothing. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, word, you're giving me hope. Because, you nah, know what I mean? I, I'm real, you know what I mean? No, as so, you should be. Like, yeah. it, it, it's not, trust me, me and Suave's relationship is very complicated. Like, we don't always get along. There's been months where we didn't talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? All right, but it's family shit. Like, I always know it's going to come back around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's been times where we, like, can't stand each other, curse each other out, whatever. The inner circle know what it is. And it's not what, there, but there's never been a divide. There's never been an unloyalty. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, people can say whatever they want. Oh, he fell off. He did this. He did that. But you don't know what's going on. Like, people see it from the outside looking in. He's just, 
he's about to do what he's supposed to do. That's all I'm going to say on that situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He had, he had uh, you know, the, the producer Weezy reposting him, singing his record word for word, which means he had to listen to it more than once. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He was, he was moving. So I was moving. He, we took meetings. You want to talk about Republic? Okay, let's talk about Republic. So I was going to kill me for telling the story. So I went to Republic. I met with Nigel Mack. Um, K.K. Roseman walked me into the meeting, who is Jimmy Henchman's nephew. Mm -hmm. um, I had the meeting. Suave was actually in Cali at the time, so he couldn't make the meeting. Um, I walk in. Nigel drives me crazy. Wants to do the deal. Wants to do the deal. Wants to do the deal. Stephen Victor comes in behind me with Pop Smoke. Um, so Steve, So this is us trying to compete with Pop. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? For the same deal. And I'm like... So, so Nigel tells me, hold on a second, give me a second, let me deal, let me deal with the Stephen Victor thing, and then we'll revisit this situation. So we, I ain't gonna lie, we got pushed to the back burner, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, two weeks after he signed Pop Smoke, Nigel got fired. <laughs> or he left, or whatever happened. You know what I'm saying? He, he's no longer with Republic Records. You know what I'm saying? He's no longer, <laughs> he's no longer an employee of Republic <laughs> Records. So, like, is it a blessing that we didn't get signed? Maybe. Because any time yeah. you get signed by an A and R, and then that person leaves or gets fired or whatever happens, you get shelved. So yeah. was this God telling us, or the universe, or whatever it is that you believe in, telling us to, you know what I mean? That's what this wasn't your time yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And pop, you know, signed through Stephen Victor is still on Republic to this day. But like, you know, we, I mean, you can't be mad. It's pop smoke, like. Word. It's my guy right there. I don't even know the man like that. I never did, never talked to him a day in my life, but he was a real one. I loved his music. I really like loved his I didn't even like him at first. That's the hilarious part. Well, he was too different when he first came out. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I heard the record, I'm like, what is this? Like, yeah. Then, I, you know, you listen to it a couple times, you're like, all right, maybe this could work. You know, like, like you hear everybody um, playing the same song, it kind of make you mad. Like, it's like, fuck is this shit? Like, <laughs> Fuck out of here! I ain't listen to it. And one day you get caught slipping. I know, you right? Accidentally hear it, you know. What no, I mean? but like you know, Pop was a real one, and I had posted. You know, people came for me on Facebook because I had posted uh, something the day he died. I was so mad at him because, like, he was in L.A. and my brother uh, had reached out to him, like, "Yo, while you're in L.A., check in with this person, this person, this person." We talked to him four hours before he passed, and like, my brother was like, "Yo." Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. and him being from New York and being young and being hardhead is like, I'm from New York, I don't have to check in, ah, uh, ah, uh. I was mad, you know what I mean? So I, mm. I kind of like, my emotions got the best of me that day. I'm like, see, this is what you get when you don't do what you're supposed to, but I didn't mean it like that. I was just frustrated and aggravated and these kids don't listen, bro. You can talk to them till they're blue in the face and they're just like, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. And you're like, and it's it, being older, you know what I'm saying? And being through a couple things, you're, you just get aggravated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you know, I had posted something on Facebook. Everybody came from my neck, as they should, as I deserved. You know what I'm saying? So, like, but I, it was just my emotion coming out. Like, I was so mad that he just didn't listen. If you would have listened, you would be sitting here right now. That's how I feel to this day. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was like, my brother just spoke to him. Just spoke to him. And I got the call before I even hit the internet. Like, yo, guess what? I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You shitting me right now? And they're like, no. And I was like, damn, bro. Like, he was, what, 19 when he passed? 20? I believe he was 19, I think. I think he was 19. He was a baby. My son is 19. <sighs> that shit crazy, bro. I remember when I saw that shit. And it was like, everyone just got these conspiracy theories. Immediately, conspiracy. Th then it's like, oh, it's from the address. And it's like, to me, I think about, like, damn, it was that deep. Like, you screenshot, you got to zoom in. You got, like, all that for what? Like, I don't, you know. You know it, what I mean? That's that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, nobody really, at least I don't know the truth. It, it's, it's a weird situation. I'm not going to get into it too much. But, um, mm -hmm. like, you got to think about it. If, if you ran up in a party, like, right, and you're trying to rob people, why didn't you get anything? You know what I mean? So yeah, it you can, it, none none of the things that they tried to sell makes any sense. So you know what I mean? Like there's it is what it is. I, I rest in peace to that man. Like he was he was about to he was on his way to be a legend. You know what I mean? So 
I can't be mad that we lost our Republic deal because Bob spoke. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know? It wasn't our time. It wasn't meant to be. But in Swap took other meetings. Don't get it twisted. Like, it just wasn't the right time or the right situation. And, you know. You're moving too fast. It, yeah. We, I mean, think about it. We did that in six months. Mm-hmm. Everything we did with no money, and when I say no money, I mean no money, we did it in six months. That was six months. He dropped that in February. He dropped Matter of Grind in February. We recorded that, what, maybe three months prior to that? So we did, that whole run was like six-month run. And we did all, got all that accomplished. Hot 97, all the shows, um, Atlanta, you know, L.A., all that in six months. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Let me let me ask you this though, because um, I know you said you uh, you say you got like over four million streams. Because I I ask a lot of people about this, but asking you is will probably be um, you could give a, a better explanation on. Um, so with marketing, like how important is marketing with um, you know, making music as an artist? Like marketing is the most okay. So like marketing is like the most important piece. That's mm-hmm. how NBA Young Boy popped. I know his, I've spoke to his, you know, A&R over at Atlantic. And if you look at the configuration of what they do with yeah. him, right? He's the littest artist, right? No radio play, no DSP really support, right? They don't mm-hmm. put him on the playlist. They don't really, it's YouTube. Incons- inconsistency. That's how he popped. You know what I mean? It's marketing and consistency. Consistently dropping, but you can't drop. Like the thing that drives me crazy about the 518, they will spend three, four, five thousand dollars on a video and then spend zero dollars in marketing. <laughs> Let's take Jay Green for example, right? Everybody knows I'm attached to Jay Green. He literally will shoot a video sitting in the middle of the road on a stool. Doesn't cost us no money, and this shit will do a million and a half views. So. Uh... Now, this whole discussion, we've been talking about a lot of stuff. Um, you've been talking about a lot of your co- accomplishments, you know, and everything, just like with Suave, you know, having platinum plaques and just being a promoter. I already know what it is. You know what I mean? Just kind of just growing up with you, just shit. This shit kind of crazy talking about it a little bit. Like, it, it don't seem like it was that long ago, but when you look back, it was a minute. Like, we've been knowing each other for a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a few years type shit. It's, mm-hmm. It feels good. <laughs> it do, it do, it do. And it's okay to brag. It's okay to be like, you know, I did this or I did that. It's all right. Like, people want you to be humble all the time. And don't get me wrong. There is a certain, you know, appeal to being humble. Like, you don't want to be, you know, braggadocious or whatever you want to say. But it's okay to poke your chest out once in a while and be like, yeah, I accomplished that. Or, yeah, I did that. Or, yeah, I've been around since this. Or whatever. It's okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People are like, oh, she bragging. Well, bro, work harder. Catch up. Or- you know what I'm saying? Then yeah. you won't feel that way because then you'll be sitting at the table even with me instead of looking up. And that's the way I look. I always surround myself. I'd be around these big-ass managers, these big-ass a rs that got fucking plaques, bro. 20, 30, 40 plaques. I'd be like, fuck, I got to catch up. Mm. That's what motivates me. I don't hang out with people that are... Un- I don't want to say underneath me because that sounds crazy, but like that my career I can't benefit from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like... I'm cool with Stunner's manager. I'm cool with, you know, like, all these big producers. I walk in their house, and they got 40 plaques on the wall. I only got two. I need, whoa, I got to catch up. Got to catch up. You feel me? And that's what motivated, like, damn, bro. I walked into my friend's house, and they got the Billboard plaques and the ASCAP plaques, and he's got a Grammy sitting on the damn thing. And I'm like, shit, I need one of those. Like, I'm going to catch And I told him that. I said, I'm going to catch you. And he just, he smiles. He's like, I don't know. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm coming for your ass. And he just laughed. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, Inch, come get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, it's like a thing. You know what I mean? It's like friendly competition. It's okay. That's yeah. what this, this culture is built on. You know what I mean? It's competition. If you look at battle raps or anything, like, it's a competition. You know what I'm saying? It's just clout kind of fucked up the competition part. People look at it like it's automatically a negative thing, but it's not. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how I feel, uh, out here, like, I've made videos talking about, like, other media platforms. Like, what I do in my lane, you know what I mean? Because if I'm trying to get them to make more content about people out here, because if you have a focused, like, concentrated, like, media out here, like, this essentially the city will go up high because everyone's talking about them, like, really putting it out. So I'll just be like, 
what y'all doing? Like, y'all need to do this. Y'all need to do that. They look at me like I don't like them. I fuck with all the platforms out here, but you know what I mean? I, I look at it like that, too, you know? It's advice, bro. Like, you can give your advice, and whether somebody heeds to it or not, mm -hmm. that's on them. You trying to do whatever you got to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I be trying to give other artists advice behind the scenes that I'm not, that I take time. Cause just because you're from the city I'm from. Don't do this. Do this. Don't do this. Do this. And sometimes they take it, and sometimes they don't. And my 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 response all the time is okay, because I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. You feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. you either gonna you either gonna help yourself and take my advice, or you're gonna discard it and, and find your own way. Either way, it's like it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't feel no type of way either way. Okay, that's it. That's my response to everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Word. <laughs> so, um, you know, like I said, you know, talking about your accomplishments, what are like, what do you have any stories for like your worst experiences, like uh, being in the industry or just like, you know, just your experience with everything that you do? Highlights in the career, uh, I don't, you know, I got a bunch of them, but like low times, let me see. Like, there's some of those, you know what I mean? When things don't go really the way you planned them or like you'd be stuck in a city and. You're like, damn, how did I get here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't have too many of those. I mean, um, you know what I mean? Because I try to insulate myself enough and I try to make the right moves. I mean, you're going to have highs and lows in any year career. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I don't really have any worse moments where I'm like, oh, my God, it was devastating. <laughs> I've been stuck in the airport for, like, overnight. Shit like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. How do we how do we get stuck here? I'll never fly American Airlines and I never go through North Carolina because I get stuck there every time. But like, but like, I'm just saying like, there's stuff like that. You know what I mean? You go to a show, you go to a city, the show gets canceled, like things like that. But nothing crazy where I'm like, you know, I was at desperate despair on death's doorstep or anything. I got myself in a situation in Punta Cana one time. I was out like, going out there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I went out there. I went out there. I went out there. Um, cause I was this is back when I was a promoter. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna do this festival. Cause I watched, um, you know, I watched my sis do the one in uh, Cancun. Um, it was Memorial Day weekend. I forget what the name of the festival is, but they do it every Memorial Day weekend, and we were part of it for a couple of years. And uh, it was like 30,000 people go into Cancun, into Mexico to do this festival. So we're like, we're going to throw our own in DR. But when you deal with the third world countries, you have to Maneuver. meet with certain people <laughs> to make sure there's no, you know, extortion. You know what I mean? Like, not throw anybody on the bus, but like you got to meet with certain people in the town to make sure things are smooth. And me being just the alpha female that I am, I just didn't think it all the way through and I get down there and I'm like in the th in the vehicle to go and I realize I'm off the resort area. I'm this white girl in Punta Cana. Punta Cana looks crazy when you get out the resort area, by the way, because you're in the third world country. And I'm in this dude, the boss's office, and I'm like sitting there and that's when it hits me in the fucking head like a ton of bricks like, bitch. You might disappear. Don't nobody know where you are. Like, and I'm, I started making phone calls back home. Like, and then another phone call was made. And the phone call came through with, at Punta Cana. Like, yo, she good, please. Like, you know what I mean? And I made it back to the resort. And everything was cool. Yeah. But I, like, at the time, I was a little bit panicking. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, how the fuck? It's one of those times that you're like, if I get out of this, I swear to God, I'm going to, like, go to church on Sundays <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> not, like, yeah. not drink anymore. And I'm yeah. like, you know what I mean? I'm going to be perfect if I ever get out of here. You know, everybody's been through those situations. But I, that's the first time. And I've been all over the country. And I've been to Detroit. And I've been to Chicago. And I've been to Louisiana. And I've been to, like, all these, like, Memphis and all these super hood spots. I was never scared like I was when I was in Punta Cana. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I was, I can honestly say I was like, oh, shit. Mm. Shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So thank God for Verizon wireless service and me being able to make the phone calls out that I made at that point in time and like the phone calls going around the way they need to go around. Everything was cool. Everything you see I'm still sitting here, so I'm good. But like I'm like, Ed, you gotta slow down. Like you're it, it gave me a very reality check that I'm a woman. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I just be moving and doing what I gotta do and like 
you know, I got my brothers behind me. I got this person. I got that person. I got, you know, phone calls, or whatever. Well, I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. You know what I mean? Big dick energy, low key. Like, you know what I mean? And like, I, that was a quick reality check. Like, bitch, slow down. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Boss. I really appreciate you. <laughs> it wasn't even that. Thank God the phone calls came through that. Because, you know, that could have been, if I disappeared, who the fuck would know? I was down there by myself. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whew, moving too fast. But anyway. Word. <laughs> Word. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> um, you were talking about Jay Green. Uh, I feel like a lot of people out here, obviously, they don't tune in as much, probably. But they, they tune in to Suave, obviously. Yep. Now, I mean, so just getting some more, like, insight on Jay Green. Like, how did you come about to meet Jay Green or even, like, know of him? Okay, so Jay Green is managed by my brother, who I know through a different lane. Um, my Green is, like, that's now that's my brother. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I, that's really my family. And... Green, I can't remember the first time I met him. I'm trying to think. It was either, it was in Atlanta. I remember that for sure. And I can't remember with the year. It was like 2000. It was right, I think it was before he dropped Rugged, to be honest with you, or right after, like before it blew up. Mm-hmm. The record wasn't big like it, like it is now. It didn't have 30 million streams on YouTube alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I'm trying to remember exactly, but... I went down there, and I, and I think it, the first time I met him, he was with Melly and Bortland and Sock Chaser and Juvie and Green. They were all together. And I think that was the first time I met them. And it was back at Keisha's Kitchen, and it was in Atlanta. Um, and, you know, my brother managed it. He calls me up. He's like, yo, I got this kid. His name is Jay Green. You ever heard of him? I'm like, nah, where's he from? He's like, he's from uh, Florida. I need you on a team, sis. And at the time, I was super involved with suave and i was like it was my whole life was suave on at that point you know what i'm saying so i'm mm-hmm. like yeah bro i got you but you know so i helped him put some shows together and i helped promote them and like just little stuff and it, I, we really didn't lock in until later on i remember taking suave down to Atlanta, and i think we went to patchwork studios and uh we walked in and green was recording i think it was bonnie and clyde it had to be like 2000 it was years ago, 2019 maybe? I can't really remember. But it was like years and years ago that they first tapped in. And um, after that, you know, the relationship grows. You know what I'm saying? And, and some, t- you know, your business relationship grows, your personal relationship. But that's really my brother now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he has a daughter. We go to, we all, that's my family. Like, my family, family. So, um, he, Green's a little on the wild side. We gotta, I gotta be like, all right, Green. It's time to be on rapper time now. Like, I need yeah. you to be a rapper now. <laughs> but it's like being the only girl in the clique, it's, it's hard. You know what I mean? I argue with them. Everything is not smooth all the time, but they are really my brothers, and I love them from the bottom of my heart. And, like, I feel like they feel, you know, it's, it's, it's mutual. So it's like Green really wants to be a CEO. That's really what he wants. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, he likes being a rapper, but he really wants to be a CEO. He wants to run his own label. That's his plan. That's fire plan. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty dope plan. <laughs> shout, out, shout out Jay Green. I yeah, was, that's I was my brother. Player. I love him to death. Wait, so um, you mentioned um, Melly, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you always, honestly, I always see you talking about him. So, He's my guy. Word. He's innocent. Yeah. And I, I love the teeth. Not going to lie. It's fire. <laughs> Permanent. Um, but yeah, could you like... what? What's your relationship like with him? Do you have? I, I don't really. I only have a relationship through Green, honestly. Like we've met in passing, and like you know, whatever, whatever. And I, you know, met his management and that kind of stuff. But I don't really know him per se to speak on his situation or what happened allegedly mm-hmm. or anything like that. I just know him through Green. Like mm-hmm. that is Green's brother. Like people, you know, go back and forth of what happened between them. Their original fallout was really like a brother fight, like at Melly Mama's house. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. like, it's family shit. So they had to get through their shit. It got ugly because you get the internet that gets involved, you get the fans that gets involved, records get dropped, the shit gets mixy. But they really are family, and they're fine now. You know, Melly. Right before Melly got locked up, we were on tour with Melly. Um, I think we made it one and a half cities before <laughs> before they actually came and locked um, Melly up, but, like, that's really Green's brother. You know what I'm saying? That's really, like, his family. So, like, 
you'll never hear Green speak a bad word about Melly. You know what I'm saying? Like, they grew up since, I think, middle school or sixth grade together. So, you know what I mean? I don't really have a personal issue. I just know him through, like, in passing and, like I said, through Green. Mm. Look, so... You know all like you know all these artists obviously these big people and even just like industry people you know mm -hmm. different uh, record label companies and stuff like that like what's it like just like what was it like your first time like really going somewhere big like okay so like how I, I was a promoter for a long time you know what I mean I was doing mm -hmm. small clubs whatever and then I knew I, 2004 I made it on Summer Jam stage I snuck my way up there I have no idea how I just weaseled my way up there and. I'll never forget it. I was standing on Summer Jam stage and lean back dropped from Fat Joe, Remy Ma, and Little John was standing there. And lean back dropped, and I, Giant Stadium went bananas. I was like, oh, I don't know what this is, but this is it. This is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So from there, uh, 2007, we hit Wayne's tour. You know, I, the, it, we just grew. And um, I started doing industry night in the city. There was a night where... Everybody was, like, all the A&Rs go out, all the, like, manager. Everybody mingles together. And uh, I got kind of in the loop with that. And I was had a 9 to 5 at the time. And I was literally, like, get off 9 to 5, drive to the city to go to the, the industry night, do the bar hop thing, change, go to the, like, uh, rest area on the throughway, change into my work clothes, sleep in the car, and go straight to work. And I was doing this by myself. So that's how I'm saying, like, this is how I got in the loop, but I did it by myself. Like, this is why, like, when people get mad at me or they say whatever they want to say or whatever, nobody was with me shooting in the gym. Like, I did that stuff by myself. Like, I didn't have dragon. Don't get me wrong. My best friend, Ariel Roberts, I dragged her to a couple things, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Poor Ari. She wasn't even in the music industry. And I'm like, come on, let's go. And she has a whole teacher. And I was dragging her all over. I'm dragging her to, like, Black Ink premiere events i'm dragging her here i'm dragging her there but you know what i mean she's not even in the industry she was just being a good friend at the time like i was dragging her all over the country too and poor baby <laughs> she just had to deal she's like she, she just you? wanted to chill yeah she was no she just went that was my she was being a good friend you know yeah. what i'm saying and that's my girl and now she's got you know her daughter and like things you know she's her life has gone in a different direction but like that was really my home girl at the time and now like you know, like, I got Ashley. Me and Ashley are, like, besties. Yeah, and shout like, out to Ashley. Shout out to Ashley. And she's, like, she's in the same industry as me, so it's a little different. Our relationship's a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah. We both run in towards the same goal. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we do a lot together. We, we ta you know, we, we do a lot. To, we bounce ideas off each other. We're starting to work together. Um, you know, we do a lot together. You know what I'm saying? We're putting events together, together, and, like, a bunch of other stuff. So, you know what I mean? But... In the beginning of my career, I was by myself. So, like, people were like, oh, she don't want to help me. Where, you know what I mean? Like, you got to put the work in yourself. This wasn't handed to me. Nobody grabbed me by the hand and walked me in somewhere and was like, oh, this is Angela, by the way. She's lit. Be her friend. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a feasible thing. Like, I was literally doing this every week for months. Mm -hmm. It wasn't one or two. I was doing it for months. And I got my connects. And then once people realize you do good business, this person introduces you to this person, who introduces you to this person, who does this, who does this. And next thing you know, as long as you keep doing good business, you're good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, all right. So, this is, like, my, like, most important question. I think this is actually an important question for any artist that's, like, watching this, even an audience, just to know. And I think it's a good question to ask you. What, what do you think is better? Like, do you think it's better to stay independent or be signed? It's a good question. It's a great question. Um, it depends on where you are in your career. Mm. Let's take Drake. Mm. Biggest artist of our, of our, even though I'm not a fan, as everybody knows, via Facebook, and I get chewed up for that too. Let's take Drake, right? Mm. Or, or Travis Scott. Pick one. Which one do you want to take? Uh, no, no, let's take Drake. I don't really like Drake either, but like... Okay, cool. You know I mean? So we're going to yeah. take Drake. So Drake, right? Got turned down by Sylvia Ronan, who's the CEO of Epic. Got turned, got turned away by like three or four labels, right? Mm -hmm. Sylvia Ronan actually told him, well, let me not get into it. But anyway, told him that his career wasn't going to work, to go back to acting, mm -hmm. right? He didn't take no for an answer, like we were talking about earlier in the interview. He kept knocking on doors. He gets to Jay Prince Jr., right? And they get him in the door. They get him with Wayne. You know, the rest is history. You guys know the rest. 
So, but Drake wasn't independent. He signed. He was signed to rap a lot. Then he was signed to Cash Money. Then Cash Money signed to. I'm sorry. Let me go backwards. He signed to rap a lot. He was had a deal with rap a lot. I don't know if he was officially signed to rap a lot, but he had a deal with rap a lot. Who was signed to Young Money? That signed to Cash Money. That signed to Republic. That signed to Universal. Mm. So now, was that a good deal? Ask, I'm asking you. Was that smart? I think it was I mean, smart. I mean, he's good now. But, he but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so let's talk about it. So that was smart on his behalf, correct? Yeah. So it was a good move, right? Yeah. Because look at him now. And now he's out that deal and he's on to OVO and doing his thing, right? Yeah. So, okay, let's take somebody else. Uh, who's independent right now? Um, let's take Young Ma. A young MA, whatever you want to call her. Right? <laughs> yeah. She's independent, but you don't hear about her. But she's 100,000. She's the only artist I can think of off the top of my head besides Ross, who we're not even going to get into that. He's he insane. Was, yeah, but he was signed at one point, so we're not going to do that. Okay, I didn't know you, that. Yeah, he was signed. He was signed at one point, so we're not going to use him. But um, So let's take a young MA, right? She's independent, stayed independent, but you don't hear about her, right? So was it good for her to stay in? She had that huge ooh, ooh record, right? Mm -hmm. But do it. Where Drake signed, and then he went crazy, even though he had like five people finger fucking his money at one point. <laughs> yeah. You understand? But look where he is now. Versus Young M.A., where she stayed independent, and I'm not saying she don't get a bag, I'm not saying she broke, I'm not saying none of that. She probably do get her bags. You know what I'm saying? But look at the difference. So you tell me, is it more important to stay signed, or is it more important to stay independent? Because really, what artist is... I think people that sign when they get hot and they can control the terms of their deal more and then they, once they're done with their deal, they walk away and do their own thing is the way to go. Mm -hmm. You got to get yourself hot first. You got to be able to have the A&R in, the, in the, the label meet your terms. Sign, use that as a vehicle and then go independent. That's my opinion. Yeah, that's Not, what Tory Lanez did, I think. That's exactly hey, what Tory Lanez did. He's going crazy. And uh, he's catching all his bags, and he's keeping all his publishing. And I'm going to tell you guys this. Streams, cool, whatever, you're publishing. If you, you, in, in the grand scheme of things, you want to keep as, your publishing as much as you can. Don't give up as less publishing as you possibly can in your deals, anything you sign. Because mm -hmm. publishing is where you're going to make your money. Got it. I'm not, I'm not an artist, but... No, I'm just saying, if you, you want me to give advice, I'm going to give it. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. So, um, you know, after having you here, we've been talking for a minute, too. No, I know, I feel you. No, oh, crazy. You're probably going to cut the... You should probably edit some of this. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. um, go ahead. Yep. Uh, is there any, like, um, up, upcoming projects, like, any future um, singles or anything that, like, we can expect coming from your team? Any other guys, you know, not just uh, swap. <laughs> not just swap. Swab's working. He's he's on the grind right now. I got him working. Nah, because I expect. Sorry, he, I, that's why I say when I say I expect it. I'm not even gonna speak on it. I'm yeah. just gonna let it do what it do. Yeah. Um, Green just dropped. Uh, Waiting to exhale too. He's got a project already done. Mm. Um, Sparks is about to drop. Uh, he's from Philly. He was starting to AR Ab first. Uh, we got him through AR Ab when AR Ab went to jail. Um. He is actually, we're in the process of trying to make it, he, I'm, I'm, fingers crossed, everything, God willing, that he's going to go out on a can camp tour and, you know, do his thing on that. Um, I'm working, doing my own thing. I, you know, I'm only managing Suave the Don, and then I'm involved in Sparks and Green via the team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I don't never want to be an artist manager again. Swab did it for me, like <laughs> one and done. It's like it's like it's like traumatization. Yeah. I don't ever want to be an artist manager again. Um, but I'm just saying, like, there's a lot going. on. There's always a lot going on. You know what yeah. I mean? Whether it's in public or in private, there's always things going on, and you hate to speak on things because you don't want to speak on it. And then things with this industry, as if you're in it, you know, like I got big features, and it's like. The record doesn't get cleared. The producer's acting stupid. Paperwork don't get signed. Whatever happens, and the record never comes out, but it's a huge record. You know it's a huge record, but it's like beyond your control to put out. You can't just drop records. It doesn't work like that when you get to the bigger side. You know, when you're 
throwing out mixtapes and you're working with other 518 artists and it's like that thing is like not a big deal but when you get to I got records with Hitmaker I got records with Reezy Renegade I got records with these big 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 we got records with Scott Storch you know what I mean we got mm. big records and it's like everything has to everybody has to get paid everybody has to sign off everybody has to do this everybody has to do that and it's like it's like so I want to speak on big things, but like none of the paperwork is done. So it's like, I can't really speak it. Cause then if I speak it and it doesn't happen, they'll go like, oh, she's lying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not lying. I have it in my phone. I can show it to you right now, but it's like, it will never come to fruition because of politics or paperwork or whatever you want to call it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So when you get the higher, like, 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 like Biggie said, more money, more problems. You know what I'm saying? We just dropped a record with PNB rock. Great. Jay Green did. Shit costs us arm and a leg because it's a hit maker beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those are not free. You don't just get in the studio with him and then. Here you go. Here you go. Here's a record. Here's a hit record, by the way. <laughs> nice doing business with you. Like, it doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there's a lot of politics involved. You know what I mean? And and it's it gets crazy. And, and I'm trying to put it. We're trying to put a tour together for Green right now. Sparks hopefully will do his key camp thing. Suave is about to go out of town. And I'm about to put him out of town and he about to do his thing for a couple weeks and then come back and we're going to work on his stuff like everybody's doing their movement you know what i'm saying and i'm excited about the whole thing like i just can't wait like you know what i mean mm -hmm. but other as far as me like i just got a job offer actually i got two job offers in the last couple of months which is dope Work. um one is the an a r for a, a independent label and one um actually god willing will be for mac agency doing booking so, like, um, we're working out the details now, but, like, that's my bitch, actually, and who doesn't want to work with their best friend, mm -hmm. right? Hell yeah. So, um, we're working on it. We just left, we just did uh, Rolling Loud. That was a fire weekend. Highlight of my weekend was stage, standing on stage with 50 in Queens. You know what I mean? I don't know yeah. how much longer he's going to be an artist. So, that was, like, iconic moment for me. I'm like, ah, this is really crazy. Mm hmm but, you know, I've done the BET Awards, I've done the Grammys, I've done that stuff already. So it's like, I just want to do it with one of my own. Like, I've been, but it's never been with one of mine. So, like, that's what I look forward to. Those are the things that I, like, got to speak into fruition and we just got to keep going for it because I need that. I need that Grammy sitting on the shelf. I'm well, not going to be happy until I get it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I got goals like that, too. I, feel, I know exactly what you mean. Like you, you, you don't want to, you, you don't want to, just constant ambition. You don't want to speak on it because you don't want to look stupid. But at the same time, it's like you got to speak it into fruition. Otherwise, it's never going to come. You got to speak it out loud so you don't look stupid. Yeah, speak it to the universe. Yeah, that's right. Because I believe the universe keeps everything in balance. Mm -hmm. You do fucked up shit, you receive fucked up energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got the, the universe going to keep you in balance even if you can't. So, like, whether you believe in God, Allah, the universe, karma, whatever you believe in, like, it's going to keep you on a level playing field and it's going to keep you in check. You know what I mean? So. Well, do you have any, all right, all right. Cause this, this, I want you to think about, do you have any, like, what would be like the last thing that you would want, um, the people to like take away from this interview? Like, yeah, any last thing that you want them to take away? Um, just keep going, man. Like, like I said, even if I, if I told you it was a no, doesn't mean that like, Somebody else is going to tell you it's a no. Even if somebody else told you it's a no and I told you yes, doesn't mean it's a yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to keep going. If you believe in yourself, like, because there's plenty of times that I've, I've even doubted myself a couple months ago. I ain't even going to lie. I called my home, homeboy like, yo, I'm about to quit music, yo. I don't want to do this shit anymore. Like, mm -hmm. between COVID and taking L's and like, the bureaucracy of the fucking paperwork of the records and like it, it it gets it weighs on you you know what i'm saying fighting with this one fighting with that one you know what i'm saying i'm like yo i don't even want to do this shit anymore i could go own some other type of business and it would have came to fruition by now you know what i mean the money yeah. would have the return of investment would have came around by now like i'm tired of this shit fuck this shit and he was like i need you to fly to Atlanta this weekend <laughs> And I'm, he's like, nah, I'm not going to, we're not doing this. You need to come down here and put your feet on the pavement. So I did. And it, I met with a couple of my peoples down there that got Grammys and got shit hanging all over the fucking place and whatever. And, the, and it, it breathed life into me. So I need to prop up every once in a while too. It's not just 
somebody who doesn't have any accolades. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everybody needs that pop up. Everybody needs somebody to wind their 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 winder back up in their back to keep them going. You know what I mean? Because this shit is hard. It's not easy. If it was easy, every fucking body would do it. Sucks. You know what I'm saying? This shit is not going to be easy. Success is not going to be easy. And rent is due every day with success. So, like, my advice to anybody or what I, if you take anything away from, if you believe in yourself, whatever that may be, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I don't care how many no's you get. Eventually, you're going to get a yes. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's yeah. going to believe in your situation. Or, like, if you feel like, you're getting too many no's as an artist, become a production company, become an engineer, become a video guy, become a manager, become an A&R, become a something. Like, just because, say, your artist didn't work in the music industry doesn't mean you got to leave the music industry altogether. If you love music, do music. Mm. You might not be an artist. I've wrote on records before. Doesn't mean I'm an artist. And yeah. it doesn't mean I'm a full-time writer, but I've wrote a couple lines on a couple of records here and there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like... Do music. Do what you love to do. Chase, chase your dream. Like, you could, you could fit in a box like everybody wants you to fit in a box, but I refuse to go in the box. I just refuse. And I'm old, and I still am not where I'm supposed to be. You, <laughs> you know what I'm I, saying? Ange. I'm doing I. <laughs> I. <laughs> You're all right. Don't worry. You know, what I'm, you know what, I'm what I'm saying, though? Like, yeah. I like to watch people put in that work. I like when people chase their dreams. Like, that's what America is supposed to be.